Hi, thank you for joining me. I'm here to do a very special book review from an author that I think is absolutely exquisite from a January book read. The book is Philomena by Kate Sarity. And Philomena was written in 1955. This is an original first printed copy that I purchased at a vintage bookstore. And Kate Sarity is a Hungarian author and she writes just these most beautifully lavishly described landscapes of Hungary and the culture of the people and she puts a lot of emotion into her writing and she's very sensitive you can tell from her writing and she actually grew up in Hungary her father was a school teacher she uh, went to college and art school in Budapest and uh, in the summer she traveled to art schools um, in France, Italy, and Germany. She actually is an illustrator. She illustrated a whole lot of books before and even when she, she was writing her own. She only wrote eight books of her own, including Philomena, but she illustrated dozens and dozens of other authors' books as well, including this is her own book she illustrated. But Philomena is by far her most popular work. And it is, um, she actually lives in lived in New York um, for quite a long time, but she has a sort of a very special passion for animals. And Philomena is another orphan tale, and it's about a little girl who, um, okay, let me first tell you about the themes in this book. So we see a lot of common themes in children's literature, and this book sort of highlights several of them. So we have the theme of the plight of the orphan. We ha it's an orphan story. We have the theme of death and dying. We have an adventure quest. We have a sort of resiliency and survival story. And a little bit of classic fairy tale element because of the happy ending. So uh, the book starts with Philomena. She is living, she's an orphan, but she's... Um, her parents are gone, so she's living with her grandmother, Babushka, and there's the, the very first chapter is about her grandmother's death, and unlike most children's literature that kind of refers to death having happened in the past, this actually kind of shows the death of her grandmother and talks about the moment she, she dies with them standing there, and so, and there are a lot of religious themes, too, in the book, and all about after her grandmother passes, her grandmother, before she dies, she says, you need to go and find your aunt, who is the grandmother's other daughter, her long lost daughter who disappeared. You need to go to um, the city and they live, you know, they live in the Hungarian countryside. So you need to go to the city and make way, take this money I'm leaving you and f try to find your aunt Liska who disappeared years and years ago. So that's sort of her quest and her only family that maybe is still surviving and living, but they don't know. So she and her grandmother said you can talk to me i'll always be there watching you and guiding you anytime you need guidance or advice stop and get close to me and talk to me so you see a lot of scenes where she stops goes into a church she sits on a bench she goes to a park and talks to tries to talk to her grandmother and all these things happen that are representative of symbols symbols that she thinks is her grandmother talking to her from heaven you know um, show me a sign grandmother what do i do and then an apple falls or someone walks by and it happens to lead her where she needs to go so a little bit of interesting theory here with the whole afterlife and, um, you know, depending on, there's a lot of reference to God. And uh, I just want to show you, first of all, the absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous illustrations. This is the very first page of the book. It's such a beautiful book and story. I, I just, I read it all in like two hours straight. Maybe it was like an hour. I don't know, but I didn't stop until I was done. And I know I was getting really sore sitting there, but I didn't care. It is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And so anyway, Philomena, and here's the, the pastor that is with her. This is right where her grandmother dies. And she heads next into the city to start her journey to find her aunt who vanished. And so along the way, we have a lot similar to what happens to Heidi in Heidi by um, Johanna, um, some say Joanna, but it's really Johanna uh, Spirey. And Heidi, she is an orphan also, and Heidi ends up, um, just like Philomena, and ending up getting sent or moving into the houses of some wealthy people where she works for them as a companion or a servant. So Philomena comes across, she gets comes across an opportunity to have a, a job um, as a maid in one house, and it doesn't work out. So she, go, she ends up coming across someone who needs a, a maid in an, another house, and then that doesn't work out. She gets into these kind of sort of accidental disasters kind of like Anne from Anna Green Gables 
and keeps getting fired and kicked out back into the world. And what's interesting about this book is the level of symbolism. And the animals, because of Kate Sarity's love of animals, are very prominent in this book. So in her first job where she's working as a maid, and, and she, she's abused by everyone she works for, you know, verbally abusive and treating her like, like dirt and making her work sort of extra hours like um, the, the little girl in Les Miserables, you know. <laughs> so um, she, she ends up acquiring a pet each step of the way. So she ends up taking a canary with her that isn't loved, but at her first job, she takes it with her. Uh, her second job, she before she gets the job because she finds a stray kitten and it has a tag. So she goes to that house to return it to claim a reward and they take her in as a maid. And of course, she that, that turns out to be a disaster. She ends up with a dog uh, in between the next job where it follows her and she takes care of it. So she ends up taking all these animals with her to each new job. She ends up being taken in as a servant and um, so the animals are really, you know, the animals are symbolistic of the animals too are unloved. They're abused. They're cast offs. And it's really all about the acceptance of opening your heart and taking in the strays. And it's kind of symbolic for her orphan plight as well. So what happens, and here she is on the bench talking to her grandmother and she asks her grandmother for a sign. And then a woman walks by or a, a woman comes by with, um, some children who are unruly and the and the woman is upset because she's a nanny and, and she can't quit. She's trying to quit, but she can't quit until she finds a new nanny. So she actually gets sort of a nanny position. And um, she ends up being taken in by a family, a single father with four children who actually is very kind and nice and ends up being the nanny for those children, even though she's only 13 years old. She's 12 and then turns 13 in this book. And you see here... And we're talking about symbolism. She's in. She's admiring a bathroom. She sees for the first time a real bathroom because she's in the city and not in the country. And there's a whole chapter on her fascination with the cleanliness. And so it's sort of um, symbolic of the sort of biblio. Uh, <laughs> it just uh, the cleansing for purity, the religious theme, a lot of undertones in here, but comes across very cleverly. And so anyway, she ends up through this family that takes her in as a nanny. Um, finding her auntie and almost sort of a destiny kind of way they end up being brought together through the last family she ends up being taken as a nanny for so it's a really nice lovely story it has a happy ending she she finds her aunt they go back to the countryside in hungary and so it's a you know it's a happy ending orphan story and but the symbolism is rich and just the countryside just the descriptions of the Hungarian countryside and the art is just just lovely. The wording is lovely. She's just, she's a brilliant writer. And I absolutely love this book. I think you could read it to um, a child of six, seven, eight years old who likes to listen to stories. You could read it yourself. It's a beautiful book. Absolutely beautiful. And you can find a modern copy of this. I actually researched it on Amazon. So Kate Sarity, Philomena, buy the book. You won't be sorry. Thanks for watching.